I've got a new product which is a tailstock digital readout for the mini lathe and it is uh, available in the US or soon will be from littlemachineshop.com and probably will soon be available at uh, other SIG distributors around the world but we'll uh, look at the installation today and how it works and what it does and uh, what some of the advantages of having that would be so let's get started this is a uh, digital readout for the mini lathe tailstock so it's a kit of parts got some screws and uh, various other parts and this is the heart of the whole device which is a digital readout that will show the uh, tailstock RAM depth so it's uh, inches and millimeters then you can presumably reset it to zero at any point so we'll get installed and see how it looks before we get into the installation I thought it might be worthwhile to talk about why you would need to accurately measure the depth of uh, a drilling or milling operation in this case I'm using a milling cutter an end mill to create a flat bottomed hole this would typically be done when I have a part like a bolt that needs to recess down in the end of a part that I'm making. As an example, these are two little uh, slitting saw holders that I made or arbors to use these small slitting saws on the mini mill. And I like these saws because you can buy them at Harbor Freight very inexpensively. If you go to some of the uh, machine tool suppliers, you'll find that similar saws which may be an inch or two inches in diameter or sometimes larger can be quite expensive you know maybe twelve fourteen twenty dollars whatever but you can buy these types at Harbor Freight for a dollar or two or less I don't remember exactly what I paid for them but this is a smaller type and these are useful for a lot of small projects and this is another larger but very thin saw which I use frequently sometimes I use two of these together if I need a slightly wider groove but the point I wanted to make with respect to the digital readout is when I'm uh, making a hole to countersink the head of the socket head cap screw, I want to make that to a specific depth, which is the depth of the screw head. So if I take my digital calipers and measure this uh, depth of the head, that's the depth that I want to go in with the end mill when I'm making this part. So that's just uh, one example of where you need an accurate uh, depth measurement. And in this case, the uh, parts are all metric, so I need to use a, a metric depth uh, on the DRO. Now, obviously, you could convert from inches to millimeters, but with the DRO, of course, you don't need to. You can just measure either in metric units or inch units directly. This slave that I'll be demonstrating on is a littlemachineshop.com 7x16 so it has quite a lot of extra space down here at the tailstock end if you have a shorter lathe a 7x14 or a 7x12 or even a 7x10 you will have uh, more limited room down here to work I often keep my compound parallel to the ways but for this job I'm going to loosen the two uh, locking screws and rotate it around so it's out of the way and on this lathe uh, I could get by without doing that because it's a 7 by 16 but if you have a shorter lathe you'll probably want to do that to give you plenty of space to work down here before we get started you'll want to have a clean workspace so uh, if you have a lot of chips and grit and other stuff around your lathe there's some tiny parts uh, as part of this assembly that could get dropped down in there and may be difficult or impossible to find so you might want to take a vacuum or a brush or whatever you use in your shop and clean up this area real well. If that's impractical or you just don't want to fool with it, you may want to take a, an old white towel or an old white t-shirt and lay it around this area here. The white will help any small parts show up if you should drop them. And having a piece of cloth there, something like a towel, will help keep them from bouncing off onto the floor and getting lost. First of all we want to remove the old tailstock ram. We're going to have a whole new one to install and we'll start out there's a uh, locking screw under here, a set screw with a locking nut and uh, let me first loosen that locking nut use a 10 millimeter wrench for that and it swings towards the back of the lathe to loosen it. 
once that's loose I can get a, a three millimeter wrench in here and loosen the set screw. It's probably easiest if you take this nut all the way off. Now with the ram locking screw removed from underneath here and loosened up I can uh, turn the hand wheel and crank the ram all the way out until it comes free from the lead screw and I should be able to just pull it out. It's catching on the locking screw here so I need to remove that a little bit more. So that screw rides along this groove here so it has to be far enough down that it can uh, slide past the end of that groove. It's a good idea to have a place or a piece of cloth again where you can uh, put the pieces that you're taking off of here. They tend to roll off onto the floor or get lost. So I'm just putting them down here in my chip tray which I've cleaned out uh, for this job. Next we want to remove the 14 millimeter nut that holds the tailstock hand wheel in place. So you just hold the hand wheel and reach back in here until you get that loose and then you can just uh, twist it off. Uh, there may be a washer back there too. I don't have one on my lathe. I think there may have been one originally but there isn't now. But So uh, just watch out for that so you don't lose it. Then before you can remove the hand wheel you need to also loosen the set screw with a three millimeter hex wrench and that's kind of tight so I'm going to use this uh, T-handle hex wrench which uh, gives me more leverage and you want to turn that out a couple of turns it may be seated down in a notch or a groove in the shaft and then uh, you may be able to just wiggle this off or you might have to take some flat bladed screwdrivers and gently prise this off if it's on there tightly but if it's uh, not coming off, it may be because the set screw isn't out far enough. So be sure you uh, have that loose enough. And now with that uh, removed, we can get access to this bushing back here, which is the next thing we'll remove. So again, I'm going to use this uh, three millimeter T-handle wrench. There's two socket head cap screws that need to be removed. We'll set them down below. Then we can remove this uh, collar or bushing here. And now that that's out, we can uh, draw the lead screw out. You want to be gentle and careful doing this so you don't bang up the threads. And set this aside on a rag somewhere uh, where it won't get dropped on the floor. You don't want to damage these threads because at some point you may want to uh, use this for some purpose. Installing the DRO, at least the first part, is pretty much a reverse of uh, what we just did. So we'll take the new lead screw, which is a finer one millimeter pitch. The original is a one and a half millimeter pitch. But we'll uh, insert that in the hole here. And then we'll go ahead and get, we use the same original bushing or collar that came on there. So we want to reuse that. And the two screws that came with that go back on. You may want to keep the first one a little bit loose until you get the second one in place so you can uh, have a little wiggle room here. And just make sure that the shaft turns freely. Sometimes there's enough play in the positioning of this collar that it might cause binding. So once uh, you've checked that, you can go ahead and tighten up these two screws and double check again to make sure it turns freely. Now we'll slide the tailstock back down here. I'm going to take the new ram the new RAM uh, doesn't have any inch or millimeter markings on it. The original one does. So in this case, it has inch markings. But of course, with the digital readout, you no longer need those. So you want to make sure you have the correct end here, which is the threaded end, is going to feed in here. And you want this groove to be in the downward position. You may have to wiggle this a little bit. This is the uh, RAM lock, and sometimes it will interfere with putting the ram back in position. And once you get it in there ways, make sure the slot or the groove is on the bottom and snug up that uh, set screw so that it rides up into the groove. You don't want the set screw to actually rub against the ram. You want to uh, tighten it until you can just feel it touch and then back it off about a half a turn or a quarter turn. Now we need to get the locking nut back in place. And the way I like to do it is uh, Put it over the hex key then put the hex key up into the set screw and that keeps number one if i drop the nut <laughs> i have a retainer for it. it doesn't go flying across the 
workshop somewhere, but also uh, it holds the set screw in position so that as I tighten the nut, I'm not also tightening the set screw until I have that snugged up. I want to make sure that the uh, ram is free to move, and then we'll uh, take our 10 millimeter wrench, bringing the handle of the wrench towards you. You want to put pressure on both ends and uh, start turning the shaft back on the right end here. Turn it uh, counterclockwise if you're looking from the end or towards you coming across the top like that until it engage, engages with the ram and then that will start to draw the ram in and just uh, draw that in a little ways to get it started. Now we have a few new parts that weren't uh, on the original installation. But this is a metal sleeve. We'll put that on in a minute. And then this is the uh, digital readout unit. And then we have a couple of uh, pieces of hardware here. These two long screws secure the digital readout unit. We have a new uh, screw and washer for the new hand wheel. And one thing you have to be particularly careful of is there's this tiny little 8 millimeter long by 2 millimeter key. And uh, that would be very easy to drop and lose. Uh, so you want, that's one of the reasons I suggest having a rag underneath the work area. So if you drop that, it uh, is relatively easy to find and doesn't bounce off somewhere. So keep an eye on that. This is just a little tray I made out of a 3x5 file card for these small parts. Next we'll put this collar on and it goes with the flat side up and there are two set screws, one on each side, that lock it on place onto this uh, collar or sleeve here. Uh, so you have to make sure that those aren't protruding inward at first or they'll prevent it from sliding over. But I also took a few minutes and uh, just went over these sharp edges and corners with the file. I don't like uh, to have any pointed areas on my machine tools. It's just too easy to jam your hand or something into them. So you may want to put that in a vise and just smooth off those edges before you install it. So it just slides over this and should go right on there. Then you want to get it level or approximately level. And then you need a two millimeter hex wrench to tighten up these set screws. This back one Maybe hard to get to with a T-handle, so you may have to use a short uh, hex wrench to get to the back one. Feel around for that. Okay, I got that tightened up now. Just make sure this is on there snugly. And next we're going to install the digital readout unit. And it goes on with this L-shape uh, this way. But before we put that on, if you look at the shaft, there are two uh, recesses milled into it. This first recess here is for a little set screw that's part of the digital readout unit. And the second slot here is for the little key that's uh, going to go in there to, to hold the tailstock hand wheel from uh, slipping. So you got to be real careful not to lose this tiny key, but we're not quite ready for that yet. So turn the uh, shaft so that those two slots are in the upward or 12 o'clock position. That will make it easier to get them engaged uh, with the DRO. And that just uh, slides over the shaft. Now we'll go ahead and put these two screws in place. And these are uh, Phillips head or crosshead screws. So snug the first one up just uh, a little bit, not tight, and then do the second one. And that will uh, make it easier for the second screw to seat uh, where it should go and now you can snug them both down. You don't want to over tighten them because uh, they could uh, crack the plastic if you make them too tight. And now I'm going to tighten this set screw. This is a one and a half millimeter hex key. And make sure that as you turn the shaft that the little uh, set screw moves with it. Here again we've got some sharp corners. So I'm going to take a little file and uh, go over those because this will be real easy to snag your hand on when you're working. So just a couple of strokes of a file here. I'm also going to do this edge in that corner. 
I'm not quite as concerned about these back corners, but I'm going to do them too. It doesn't take much on this plastic, it's, uh, so you want to just use light strokes. There we go, that's a lot better. This next operation, I'm going to put that little key in place. This is where you have to be very careful. You don't want to lose this key because it would be very difficult to find if you drop it. But you want to get that uh, slot in the 12 o'clock position and just put that in there. I'm going to go ahead and put a tiny drop of uh, super glue in there. This is uh, this Loctite Ultra Gel. I've been using this and it's kind of thick. I like it because you can get good control and you just squeeze these little gizmos on the side here and uh, you can uh, get just the amount you want there. It doesn't get all over and stuck to your fingers like uh, typical super glue does. Now if I can do this without gluing my finger to the key I'll be happy. Try to get, oh there we go, had it turned in the wrong orientation. Okay hopefully that will keep the key from getting lost. Before we put the hand wheel in place, now that I've got my key secured in here, um, this, if you haven't done so already, this is a good time to put the battery in because once the hand wheel's in place, it's less uh, accessible. This uses a CR2032 button cell, 3 volts, and uh, you can probably find these at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, but I like to buy them in bulk packs of 10 or 20 or sometimes even more uh, from eBay because they're cheaper. And I have a lot of devices that use these. Button cell goes in this little tray with the plus side down. And this, uh, in this case, it has sort of a corrugated surface here. And then we just slide that in and it just snaps into place. Then to remove it, you just grasp it with your fingernails. And there's two little handles here that you squeeze in gently and then just pull it out. And it should snap into place. And as you put it in place, you'll probably see the uh, digital readout uh, come on. You may need to hold the power switch down to reset it when you first install the battery. It uh, you know, may be in a sort of indeterminate state and the numbers will jump around. But if you just hold that off button down for a second, it'll come off and then reboot, so to speak. And I pre-assembled the handle. There's just a long bolt and uh, this chrome handle. There's no locking nut needed because this threads right into the handle and the uh, length is adjusted so that you just tighten it down and it's good to go. Okay, now we got to line up that little key slot there with our key, uh, like so. And now we bring the uh, set screw up to the top position and tighten that down. And there we go, snug that up. I'll just uh, make sure that it turns freely without binding and as you turn the hand wheel, the uh, ram should move in and out, so it all looks good. And the final step, now with the uh, hand wheel tightened down with the set screw, there's a little washer and a socket head cap screw that uh, act as a retainer here on the back end of the hand wheel. So get those started. And then the three millimeter hex key. We'll uh, tighten that down. There we go. Now I'll just snug that up a little bit more. Alright, that should do it. If you loosen the set screws on either side of this metal sleeve, you can rotate the whole unit around. And I found, uh, for my needs at least, it's more convenient if I have it uh, tilted this way. I get less glare from the lights and it's easier for me to read it in this position than if it's horizontal.